Hi! H hello! And welcome to my demonstration of Blue Heron Arts uh, watercolor brushes. Yeah. They're not actually watercolor brushes, they are Chinese calligraphy brushes that are handmade in China in Henry Lee's, who owns the uh, Blue Heron Arts studio. Not studio, a hometown. <laughs> Uh, I was exposed to these brushes by Arlisha from Arlabine, and she is one of my favorite artists ever. I love her so much. She has such a peppy personality. If you haven't heard of her yet and somehow watching this video, what are you doing with your life? Go watch her. She's an Amazon affiliate, and if you want anything from Amazon, go through her so she gets a little bit of kickback, but no, uh extra fees to you. It's just great. So more about these brushes that I got. I actually started using these brushes halfway through the video. You'll see a little clip of me putting down my Grace Art brushes and then pushing them aside and then me bringing out my calligraphy brushes that I love so dearly. They hold, they're made out of natural fibers, so they hold a lot, a lot of water. My current favorite run is the goat brush hair, goat hair brush, <laughs> that holds a lot of water and can hold a really fine tip when you need it to. If you're looking for a really fine tip, I would recommend getting the uh, weasel hair brush and fine. And I got a pack of three, which is a a large goat hair brush, and then a medium wolf hair brush, and then a small fine tipped weasel brush hair. And they all work very very well. They all hold a lot more water than your traditional watercolor brushes, at least the ones that I've used, like uh, Simply Simmons and Grace Art and uh, Common. Windsor Newton Cotman brushes. I really like all three of those brush brands, but they are just not as good for what I do in my art than. Uh, here's that clip. <laughs> but they are just not as good as what these brushes can do for my art. They do so well for what I need them to do, and they can. They just hold a lot of water, and they are lovely to work with. I can use one brush for a whole entire painting that needs a lot of uh, detail and a lot of water holding, but also have a lot of uh, body to the brushwork also. If you use very little water, you get these very, very nice looking uh, very fibrous brush strokes that I really really love but just not for this painting. I will probably do a better demonstration of using just these brushes in a later video with a uh, like a comparison between them and another brand that I will have to invest in because and probably give away because I'm not going to use them because these are the brushes that you need if you want to do any sort of watercolor work. I'm not, also, I'm, I, this is just stuff that I got with my own money. I'm not uh, associated with Henry Lee or Blue Heron Arts in any way. I am just someone who is very passionate about what they have created and what they have brought to the market in watercolor brushes and other things like they have rice paper for traditional Chinese calligraphy which I think is awesome. If you haven't heard of him, Henry Lee is a very pronoun profound <laughs> pronoun <laughs> profound artist in the traditional Chinese atmosphere of uh, Sumie painting. These are what these brushes are for, and I have a feeling that someone is going to be rolling over in their grave if they find out that I have been using them for... Con is this... like, anime, semi-realism, <laughs> weeb, art... Also, 
in the painting itself, you'll see a lot of black uh, sepia, actually, smudges of paint all over the face. That's because my cat likes to dip her paws in water and as my painting is drying, dance on it with her wet paws. She's... She's lovely. I love my cat. But, yeah. Um, as you'll see here, I'm using the combination brush that I bought of Goat and Wolf and it holds it probably is the best brush that I have that hold, that's thick and thin and then my wolf hair can make very thin lines and very thick lines but not as thick as the uh, the goat traditional goat hair like I will probably make a video just comparing these things similar to how uh, tell you Hey, tell ye something. I forgot his last name. I want to do something as in depth as that, with where I uh, show off these brushes because they need a lot more recognition. They need he needs a lot more. Not that he needs more business. More like he has a whole entire untapped industry of artists at his fingertips that that can do these semi-realism paintings or uh, contemporary art or anything. If I can keep promoting this man and his art and his uh, business, I can. I will and I can and I am making no sense because I am I have been doing schoolwork all day and I am tired. <laughs> So, yeah, this is pretty much all I have to say about the brushes. Now this piece is actually a redraw of one of my most famous pieces, I guess I could say. Monarchy... Monarch... I'm just going to pronounce it how I pronounce it, not how you're supposed to pronounce it. Monarchial Chaos. It's a play on words. I would always imagine this character to be like a princess or something, and she... And the butterflies to be like the chaos of her trying to run a kingdom and she's going through the process of concentrating even though all of this is going on around her and she doesn't have any sort of way to fight against it besides like just keep on going keep on focusing which is actually, or like, she's embracing the chaos and using it to her advantage. And then there's that big black spot that encouraged me to make a lot more big black spots. Lovely. <laughs> oh, this part repeats for some reason. Lovely. That's great. Anyways. I will leave you to the rest of the video with some music and probably not fix that because I just want to upload this video. See you later. Have a great day. Bye bye.